Welcome to the Dutch it's cast. With the new shaved head Bonner. Episode 13. Yep. Look at it. No more dreads. I got my I got my Irish hat back on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just just like in the old days. <laughs> Is that the old one that I had? No. You you have the OG. Somebody has the OG. <laughs> but this was the I second you, one. I thought you had it last and it looked a lot like that one. It was uh the same model. Um I wonder who's got that. But because they're hand stitched and shit. I don't know if they're hand stitched, but you mm-hmm. could buy you could buy five of the same model and they'll all look completely different. You know. What's it what was the brand, do you know? Uh Hannah Hats of Donegal. Kind of okay. Donegal. Yeah. That's where the Bonners are from, by the way. Okay. The Bonaires, the well and down handsome the Bonaires, people. Bonaires, yes. <laughs> How's your day? Day was good. Um, I actually worked today, and I had to give an estimate today to a pretty, pretty fairly large job. Um, I was in Oxford, so I went over to the Oxford Walmart. I don't know if you knew this, but um, Hagi is like a big wig manager down there at that location. I think you told me. Yeah. I think you told me this. So I popped in there hoping I could surprise him, like catch him on the floor. But uh, I never saw him. I had to pick up a few things at the Wally World. I rarely go there, but every time I go, I'm like, why don't I come here more often? Oh, I know, dude. It's so cheap. Yeah. Is there an Oxford Mall? Or am I confusing that with the Auburn Mall? Uh, Auburn Mall. Yeah. 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 Kind of a step above the Greendale Mall. Which is no longer, by the way. <laughs> I know, no longer. And to just, just to, just to rub your face in it a little bit more, it became an Amazon warehouse. <laughs> you know, Amazon was like, "I'm going to put you guys out of business and then make your entire building a warehouse for us." <laughs> that is just throwing salt on the wound. Yeah. Yeah. There's another Amazon. Uh, warehouse in Shrewsbury, like right over by Willikers, actually. Okay, that makes sense. There's a lot of uh, like um, freight activity over there, big yeah. rigs and stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Willikers was good the other night. That was fun. Yeah, yeah. that was fun. That whole night was yeah. great, man. Playing some pool, catching out a fight. Yeah, I was I was super tired. Playing some rummy. We did some yeah. rummy. Yeah, that was yeah. a good night, man. Yeah, it was good. Uh, I thought I was going to hop into that hot tub. Was it snowing out? No, no not no. that day or the day before it was snowing there. The day there. before was, was bad, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was going into the snow and then into the hot tub doing a little ice, cool, hot on the on the body. Yeah. Came back, probably knows about that. No, the second we arrived there, that's what John Blaze demonstrated for us immediately. <laughs> I know. He was in there in his own world. I don't I don't know if Johnny Massett has a video recording of the entry to the driveway. But uh I barreled through. Oh man. Well you're gonna have to tap into the security camera. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was just trying to get over the snow, but you guys were like, who the fuck was that? <laughs> well we knew it was you. Oh, you did. The second oh, okay. we knew it was you, we felt fine barreling in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, yeah, today's guest is, we've had him on before. This is, I believe, our first repeat guest, right? Other than BT, and this Other is like a... BT. yeah. This is like a real, hopefully, time spent with them because we had poor reception in the Everglades, but uh Yeah. Chris Kimback, the one and only. Yeah, coming coming out of the waiting room, fresh, released. What's oh, up, man, baby? Dude. What up, man? Can you hear me? Can hear you. Yep. Can hear you. How's it going? Oh, dude, oh, tell me he's got bad service. Is still in here? I'm in here. Can you see me? 
What up? I can see you now. Yeah. I'm debating whether I should do it on my fucking phone or computer. What do you guys think? Pistol's got a mic now, dude. I really? got a mic, man. Yeah, that's crazy. You don't, you don't have your mic, bro. <laughs> I got a drink. drink. He's got a single. Came He's got a single. Came prepared with the drink. What's uh, up, dude? I, yeah, I think you're Not good, much. Chris. Uh, you'll, we'll roll with it. Is it an iPhone? I mean, that, that audio yeah, is iPhone. solid. Yeah. Yeah, you sound pretty clear, good. Man. Nice and good. I'm trying to get some good lighting out here. Maybe going to do a stogie, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, there you perfect. Go. So, um, dude, well, I, you know, I, I just noticed your uh, your shirt there, Little Havana. Dude, I got this at a nice uh, thrifty the other day. Dude, guess what I made for dinner for the fam tonight? A little fucking Cuban? A Cuban sa- Cuban sandwiches, dude. Oh, dude. That's impressive. Yeah. You can do, you can, uh, multifaceted. Yeah, my lighting fucking sucks right now, huh? You're oh, that's good. that's not bad. There you go. There yeah. You go. All right, there you look go. Look like you're in a Mountain Dew bottle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you're good, man. Sponsors, man. There it is. Uh, you good? Does that work? Yeah, we can, cool. we can yeah, roll you the comfortable? vertical. That's, that's cool. Should I get my hat? Hold on. I got to get my hat so you guys know I'm in fucking, uh, Miami here. <laughs> Oh, the fedora? Is it a fedora, Chris? Yeah. No, it's not a fedora. Shocker. Jessica, you know where my hat is? Hey, Jessica. Oh, it's right here. Hey, Jessica. Can I say hi to everybody? <laughs> <laughs> no hi, English. Jessica. No English tonight. No English? <laughs> Are you no learning English. Spanish? <laughs> um, I tried to. Uh, I tried to for a little bit. I was giving it like an honest effort. Mm-hmm. When I was in New York, I did it more because whenever I was on the train, I do the fucking uh, little Duolingo action. Yeah. Okay. But then uh, out here, you're just driving everywhere. So I stopped. We tried to do it like for a little bit every night. We tried to do some Spanish lessons and then I just gave up. So mm-hmm. luckily her English is good enough. So we make it make it work. Nice. That's great. Um, cheers, dudes. Cheers, cheers man. Yeah, thanks for coming back sweet? on, man. We get the stationary version. Dude, that last time was a disaster, huh? No, it was fine. No, it was there was fun. Some, there was it, was some... fun. it was great. We were getting into some good topics, and then it would cut out, like just as we were getting to the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happens with this, man. I mean, we, we have conversations with people, and we're kind of like covering some of the basic stuff. And then once we start digging into a specific... It's almost time to wrap up. So yeah, yeah. Once you get into the stuff that you uh, are going to regret saying, that's when it gets good. <laughs> yeah. You know? When you're like, oh fuck, I hope they don't air this. Exactly. That's exactly. when. It, that's the good. That's the stuff people want to hear. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, there were people listening on the last time we were on, Chris, and they, uh, Lynn Wilkinson, said that you guys never went out. She denied. So she denied. She, uh, she denied. She betrays it. me like fucking Judas, huh? <laughs> Well, you did mention that you never spoke to her when you went out with her. So I never spoke to any of my girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> so Lynn, so that one, air. so that one aired. We, that one got you. We got a good enough. Oh uh, yeah, it's aired. Oh, amazing! I didn't realize that. Yeah, you said you you just like the only time you would see them would be at the KFC dances, right? Even then, I would be <laughs> terrified. People would have to like force us to dance. Roller Kingdom or some you shit know? like that. Dude, Roller, Roller Kingdom, Kingdom was the greatest, wow. man. Remember, people could like do tricks and stuff, and you'd uh, just be like, "Damn, I wish I was, I wish I was that kid." I that was the guy that was fucking kids. cleaning up. Yes, I remember mm-hmm. some of the older people. Fucking yeah, some bunch. people were. Where were was really Roller good. Kingdom? Was Roller Kingdom by Solomon Pond Mall? It was in Hudson. Yeah, it was yes, close that, to Hudson. Close to the definitely Solomon sounds Pond. like a Hudson. Yeah. Sounds like a Hudson thing. I wonder if it's still there. <laughs> no way. <laughs> and it had laser tag. I mean, there wasn't a better oh, one-two yeah. punch than the roller skating and then laser tag. Oh, yeah. I mean, you couldn't have a better birthday. If you had a birthday party there, you were fucking killing it. You know, mm-hmm. you were you were doing all right. Yeah. Everybody was showing up to that yeah. birthday party. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Your parents had money. Uh, but yeah, dude, me and Lynn <laughs> definitely fucking, I mean, we were something in fifth grade. She was at Patton. I was at Patton. We never, uh, it was unspoken, but we definitely we definitely dated for like a week or so. But it was you can ask anybody. Unspoken. Ask Parmenter. Have you had Parmenter on? He was no. He I mean, was around. I want to get him on here. 
Brian Benavides. Yeah. Have you had Benavides on yet? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I've been yeah, trying to get Dan so. Munier on though. Um Dude, you can get some some legends and I'm just sorry. go <laughs> Go deep on on memories, you know. Wow. Benavides, where is he now? Ryan Benavides. I don't know. Yeah. He, He's got to be he out must there have somewhere. Moved away, like fifth grade, sixth grade. No, or did he, was he in middle school? He middle was school. always around. Like he would he would move and then he would come back and then he would just resurface. You know, a lot of kids would just resurface at times, yeah. and you would yeah. forget about him. Then you're like, oh shit, that kid was like yeah. a, one of my best friends. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, Patton, were you guys at Pat? You were at Patton. Pete, right? Were you yeah, guys I was both at Patton, Patton that one year when they did the switch with you. Yeah, and we I had the football remember. league outside, and uh, we had the Krista Bar- Krista Barnes. We had the football league. Remember? Yeah, that was sweet. That was sick. Krista Krista Barnes was like one of the best football players in the in the league. <laughs> she was a savage. We should get <laughs> she her was on the, too. She was amazing. Oh man. <laughs> um. Also, my Tom first D. hand. My, also, my first hand job was from Krista Barnes, but that's a side. That's a side <laughs> note. Uh, no, we can nice. get into that. <laughs> I think Be- behind Willie's Steakhouse. Wow, how was that? Quick, amazing. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a, definitely quick. One two anyway. pump. <laughs> it's actually before I jerk before I jerked myself off. I got a hand oh, job. Wow, nice, yeah. dude. Wow, that's... I was very, I was very late wow. in jerking off. This was like going into freshman year, so everybody was like already doing it and stuff. And I was like, yeah, I don't know if well, mine even, wor- if mine even works. And then that happened. I was like, dope. It works. Yeah. So and then, works. and then since then I haven't been, and then I haven't been able to shut it off since then. You know? Oh yeah. Man. Hell yeah, dude. Well, congratulations. That's, that's something <laughs> we can you all... always had. You, you know what? My first was, uh, uh, not hand. My first, uh, uh, ep- whatever. <sighs> Molestation. Well, my first experience with a an actual orgasm was a wet dream, and you always talked about how you have wet dreams. Do you still have wet dreams? Into my thirties, no. I haven't had one in a while since I've had my uh, nuts. lady here. But yeah, if I go on like a long streak of like <laughs> two weeks or so, I'll have a I'll have That's a wet dream. Amazing! I mean, I know. I've gotten close, but you have to go a long time, time without without uh, jerking off, which is the tough part. But if you yeah. can do it. I'm pretty confident that everybody can have everybody can have those. It's just really tough to to do it, you know. But yeah, I, I had one when we did our road trip. I had like a couple of them <laughs> because we weren't able. We, we weren't, weren't like doing, yeah. yeah, we weren't like me and chicks living and, out of a uh, van together. Yeah, you can't fucking really pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, the funny story about that is, I remember like two weeks into the trip, we we're all talking about it, like, damn, like I haven't jerked off or anything and and everybody's looking around pete's like i've jerked off like three times and we're like dude we haven't been apart <laughs> from each have. other for more than three minutes what are you talking about uh, i find i find spots <laughs> i find an opening and i take it uh i don't know where it was but it must have been somewhere and then uh, we did run into a couple girls i mean we ran yeah. into someone and then we went to uh the best time which was uh which was um, New Orleans. New Orleans? Yeah. yeah, amazing. Yeah, we had a blast. You and I, especially, I think. Amazing. I don't remember. I mean, I don't know well, what you met. Her. Destiny. Yeah, and then you got her happened. number, just, and you like I just fell in love with her. Yeah, <laughs> and I fell in love with like the girl next door, and she got like kicked out because it was getting a little too much. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, I mean. Yeah, I remember we had no money, and we went to a stri- in New Orleans. You can just walk into strip clubs. We had no money. Yeah, we bought like two dollar beers and just sat there for like hours. And they were yeah, like, "What do you guys do?" <laughs> and it even the strippers great. were like, "Yeah, we'll just hang out, I guess." Yeah, we. Yeah. we I mean, that can't be a profitable business. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm sure there's yeah. high turnover. You know, there's high turnover in that industry. <laughs> Yeah, people are in and out. People, mm-hmm. I think they just go there for like that was probably their road trip. You know, they were probably on a road trip. We're like, why don't we just make some extra cash? <laughs> That's the thing. Girls always have that fallback option that we don't have. Yeah. Yeah. At any point, you could just be a stripper. Now you can be an OnlyFanser, like yep. if you're willing to do it. But again, once that once that's on the internet, that's tough. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tough one to explain to the kids. 
There's dudes who <laughs> use OnlyFans, actually. Not, like, for sex, either. It's weird. Like, uh, I've heard of a few uh, independent musicians using it. Like, I think that was the original purpose of it, was mm-hmm. for, like, bands and stuff, and you can mm-hmm. only... Only like the real fans got yeah. to have like access to this shit, and it immediately just turned porn. Yeah, like a like a Patreon wow. or something. Exactly. Yeah. And then, I remember, remember they tried for like a week. They're like, "All right, no more porn on this site," and everybody's like, "Fuck that, <laughs> <laughs> no chance." Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's just bringing everyone in so much income, dude. I wonder what OnlyFans takes off the cut. I wonder what their cut is. I'm sure it's a good amount. It's got to yeah. be like Airbnb. They probably just keep jacking up their rates, and it's like, yeah. what are people going to do? Mm-hmm. Start their own? Yeah, right. You got to just you got to take it in the ass. You know, no pun <laughs> <Right>. intended. <laughs> of course. Yeah. But it's funny. It, w- during the pandemic was when that got. It was like perfect timing for that because I remember there was some uh, comedian chicks that I like knew of. Didn't really know them that well, but they started doing OnlyFans and they just blew up on OnlyFans. And a lot of them were like, "Oh, during like during the pandemic, I had no choice. Like, I had to, I had to do something to make money. It's like mm-hmm. if you just waited a week, you probably could have got some, some unemployment. I mean, like wow. if, if that's your first thought, like, oh, I can't. Yeah. I, like, Whole Foods isn't like you don't go from making like twelve bucks an hour to make being like, oh, I need to make thirty G's a week now. Yeah, yeah. like Is I think it was just an excuse. Well, you can. I, I evidently you can do that, man. <laughs> You can do that's just the thing that. <laughs> when you find out like oh i can do this it's like yeah why would you ever go back to anything else yeah yeah it's but, an in- interesting yeah. times interesting times man oh i'd hate to uh what the fuck would yeah. george carlin think of only fans dude <laughs> <laughs> he'd rip it apart like he does with all, a lot of other human experience things oh Mad. But I never really got into it, George Carlin, but they said he used to just do an hour every year and he wouldn't like practice it. He would just release a, an hour special and it would just be him. Like He would just like write for a year and then he'd be like, okay, I'm ready. Mm-hmm. And then he would just be like, here it is. And just hope that it, oh, hope yeah, that it went well. He was not a spontaneous comedian at all. He <laughs> yeah. his, his shit was well composed. You know, like, yeah, a, yeah, like, just a, like a classical composer in music or yeah. some shit. You know? Well, it w- and it was sophisticated content too. I mean, he was he was going after some stuff, and he had to know his stuff, and he clearly did, and he would deliver it well on top of all that. So, but his writing for some time, if he if he like went to the lab, like Chris is saying, I I, I could see that. I could see that. Yeah, and then freestyle That's, it because he's probably got it memorized, you know. Or, well, it's just least, crazy to think that. Like that takes years yeah. to come up with that stuff, and he was just like, "Yeah, I'm ready to go." Yeah, it's insane. But what's your uh, what's your routine? Oh my pro my artistic uh, process. Oh, yes, yeah. it's, it's deep, man. Um, no, I try. I try well, to write get into whenever that, I can. Let's get into yeah. That. My <laughs> artistic process. You guys, how much this time is do part you of have? It. How much time do you have? Um, yeah, it's just, uh, I, I have to write a lot of people like can just come up with funny shit and they're just naturally funny, but I have to write like every, all the time. And if I don't, like, I just don't, it, like, I think like, Oh shit, will just come to me. And it just never does. I have to sit down Mm. and just fucking grind it out. And it's very, very tedious, but I don't know. I guess that's the, uh, do any, do any of your shows like, like post live, like other than the short stuff, like stream live. Yeah. Like a, like a whole, how, how long are you up there for? Like 15, 20, half hour, yeah, 15, 20 yeah. is probably the, the longest I'll do. Um, no, thank God they don't, but I'll record, <laughs> I'll record them. And if they're good, I'll put them up. Like yeah. I have some, uh, I have some full sets on YouTube. Yeah. That, uh, but only the good, only the good ones. Like, it's rare that I'm like, oh, how this long is good now? I think it started when I was like 30 and I'm 36 oh, now. Oh, yeah. So wow. it's crazy. Wow. I know. That's yeah. uh that's the longest career you've ever had, right? Big time. Dude. Big time. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's uh, I've jumped so many things, but comedy has kind of been 
consistent just because it like uh i don't know you probably know john with music it just kind of like keeps you like if you're away from it for a while you're just like i gotta do if it wasn't comedy it would have to be something else that would have to fill that yeah fill that void Mm -hmm. so the performance or the creative or what i don't know what it is yeah i guess it's i guess it's the performing or just like feeling like you're not like it's like okay i don't know you see other people doing it and you're just like oh they're they're at this point i should be at that point you know it's yeah. like it's definitely the performing okay i think that's it yeah, yeah it's the rise the high you get from like y- you'll do like 20 horrible shows yeah. and the one good one will be like okay i can do it. i'm gonna yeah, keep doing oh, yeah. it that'll that'll buy you like six more months of All being like okay one one good night to just be like mm-hmm. I, this you know you're like i'm the fucking king I'm and a, then you go I'm back to being a, yeah, <laughs> you go back to being a uh, nobody for a while, but it's like for that, hey, like one sec, tag. it's like, oh man, yeah. maybe there's something there. You know, it's like a, a good basketball, you play your sport well or something. You're like, holy shit. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. I'm, I, I'm probably going to, I might go to the NBA. Like mm-hmm. this is going to happen. Did you ever have That's that what comedy thought, is like, Chris, about, uh, were you, were you ever the, trying to like play college, like high college ball? Play college, or? yeah, like, of course. <laughs> played of course. two sport college, man. Yeah, I played two in college, but yeah, of course. When you're like, even in high school, I like I wasn't getting recruited by anybody, but I'm still like, you have one good game, you play How against are you somebody. Not that, recruited by anybody. You handle the ball the whole fucking game, whether it was basketball or soccer. I think it's tough your unless size, you're like a, a five star, especially back then. It was like you were a five-star guy or you just i don't know i yeah. guess in those two sports too like there's soccer good soccer programs and things there's a lot of good soccer down here in the south and the yeah there's just so players many. are with your skill set and then on top of that like bigger, play year faster. round and are also bigger faster yeah yeah yeah, but that was uh yeah, it's the same feeling. You just have like one good game. You're like, "Oh, I could do this. I could play it. I could I could play at Duke for sure." <laughs> you know, it's delusion. You well, got to have your, some delusion. Are your aspirations to be to be that big time? To be a family I don't know. household that's, name? That's the thing. People ask like what you already goals? are at my house. I mean, we exactly. all we talk it, about That's really all that matters. All day. Well, this podcast will be the biggest credit of my career so far. And I <laughs> <laughs> I didn't need to do any comedy and I could have been on this podcast. Um, yeah, I don't really have any goals. Like you just keep doing it and you have no idea why you're doing it. And it's like, logically, you shouldn't be like, logically, I should have given up a long time yeah. ago. Yeah. But it's like, you just keep doing it just to yeah. just to do it. You don't know why. Yeah, it's kind of like what we're doing here. We're just we're just keep we're just gonna keep doing this and just kind of get quality over quantity. Yeah, for uh, us, over for time, our, for ourselves, it's not for anyone else. You know. Yeah, um, exactly. But it but it, but it is do, it is moving something. It's just you don't know exactly what or where. It's not like a it's an identifiable identifiable trajectory. Like, I don't yeah, know. you don't go to people like, oh, I'm gonna be Rogan. That's yeah. why I'm doing a podcast. But it's like. Yeah, you want to just do it. You just do it. Yeah, and see what happens because it's like better because you can't not do it. Yeah, we like the art form, so I mean, and you know, I can handle this shit. You know, it's like plugins uh, and fucking. That's the this key, software, man. It, that software, it's pretty easy to you know. Ninety percent is just showing up. You just yeah. show up and uh, <laughs> things happen. You know, you guys get a good. You guys get a good setup here. I like the setup. And with Zoom, like anybody can do a podcast at any time now. It's just a matter of like showing up and doing it. And it's like, yeah. Like Jordan Peterson says, inaction is action in itself. So if you're not doing something, that's still doing something. It's just doing it in the wrong direction. So it's like you have to do. So it's like if you're doing, you have to do something, you know, because not doing something is also an action. It's just an action in, in the wrong way. Yeah. He's when a, people he's think like character, dude. That guy, I like him. Yeah, dude, too. he came onto the scene hot. When he came on, it was fucking like this guy's incredible. And now he's he's almost like too available now. Like mm-hmm. now, every day these guys have to be putting out content. So eventually, they're gonna say like crazy shit. But I mean, so like brilliant guy. Like these these. When did you when, first like, hear about him, Rogan? <laughs> Rogan for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I guess yeah. Same. And they 
like sometimes I'll try to like listen to conversations with him and like another intellectual. And I'll just be like, what mm-hmm. language are they even speaking? Mm-hmm. I'll be like, oh, I'll get smarter from listening to this. And it's like, I have no idea what the well, fuck Jordan Peterson about. in particular, he's tough to follow because he's so, so articulate in that the, every word he chooses is like the correct one. And that's why he can battle folks so easily because he's like, you didn't really understand what I was saying. Mm-hmm. And if you if you listen to this recording and freaking look up the words I'm using, you'll yeah. see that I don't mean any harm to anyone here and da 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 da. And he's right. just, he's very, he's, he's a smart guy, but he battles with shit like the rest of us too. So, yeah. And people, um, would always come at him. Like people always come at him for like, I don't know anything. And it's like, yeah, he's trying to do, he's trying to do something, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. like, I, I don't know people that sit back and are just like, oh, he's a misogynist or something. It's like, you gotta have somebody that can like talk to men mm-hmm. and like, yeah. And maybe he doesn't say it like in the right ways, but he's saying like, and like you said, he could argue with any, he could have a a discussion with anybody, but people don't want to discuss with him because they know he would just get, you get roasted by him right? because he's so good at it. It's like freestyling against Eminem. Exactly. (laughs) Like you can't beat it. There's no way you could beat Peterson in like any, what about like uh, anything to argue. um... The conservative, Andrew Tate? the conservative guy, dude. Put the uh, Shapiro, Ben Shapiro. Shapiro, Shapiro. Dude. Put Shapiro, Shapiro in with Peterson, dude. They do for the same company talks. now. Yeah, they've had talks. I think for the reason. No, Shapiro. Uh, Peterson works for Shapiro's company now. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, the, he works that, for the, the Daily, Daily Wire. Yeah, the Daily Wire. Yeah, yeah. but he was Another a professor, one. right? Or is he not a professor he anymore? He was a was professor in somewhere in Toronto? Canada. Yeah, you know, and. Uh, yeah, but Shapiro's another one that could just argue endlessly about yeah. anything, and I I would put him up against anybody in like yeah. any discussion. What so about the it's tough um, to space guy, uh, DeGrasse Musk? Tyson? Uh, oh, DeGrasse Tyson, yeah, yeah he's a, he's a good one too. He could probably be. He's another one. Like he'll come on podcasts. I'll be like, all right, I'm gonna listen to this and get yeah. get some info out of it, and I can't tell you one one thing he said that I like retained, <laughs> but who the fuck knows? So who else have or you the guys Cauldron uh, podcast, the Cauldron podcast? Oh yeah. I was Burke. just going to ask who else uh, have you had Colin Burke on? Yeah, yeah. dude. You got to yeah. listen. I got to listen to him. Do your homework. I'll, I'll hear some, uh, I'll hear some of his clips. He's got the perfect, perfect voice, voice for that dude. Yeah. For like history. Yeah. We, we, we can't fall wait asleep to have to that. back on man. He's, he's, He's a good shit. Good episode every time. We should honestly What's probably up? be having him on like once a month. He, he texts us. <laughs> he te- he's like, he's ready. He's, you know, he's ready to go. Cause yeah. like, he, yeah. was, he was a debater too. Like when we were in high school, like he, he, Very con- he's another he one of those him. guys who I'd love to see in an argument with other intellectuals, you know? Yeah. He would embrace the so, uh, confrontation for yeah. sure. And and we, we had low on a uh, couple weeks ago. So we had our first female and she was nice. bringing up, she was bringing up Steve O's freshman year president. Were you yeah. vice president? Yeah. <laughs> That's Was that what it was? And low was secretary. Theo was yeah. treasurer uh, or maybe other way around. Maybe Theo was secretary treasurer. Yeah. And I forget who else it was. Yeah. We had a clean sweep. And then we went back in the next year. I think Steve-O was going to step down. So I was like, oh, I'll, I'll be president and just got roasted by somebody. What? Some chick that was like, this is not a popularity contest. Oh, and everybody's wow. like, yeah, fuck yeah, that. <laughs> oh, so, who be, so, so some chick became class president some chick after that? For you. Some chick became class president. Oh. And then she she had a blog or something that was talking shit about one of the teachers so she got uh, dethroned, and then I think Lowe became president, right? Whoa. Who was, was this yeah. mystery woman, man? We need yeah. to find this out. I forget her name, dude. I can see her face, but I forget her name. Oh, Lowe would, Lowe 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 would know. Yeah, he, you know who knows. would definitely know is Terrell. You should have Terrell on call, dude, for every... Terrell, you know, he, he as, as like the producer. producer. Exactly. Yeah, he, he could wa- be the producer. He wants to be like Jamie on, on Joe Rogan and just hear behind the scenes producer slash... Look everything up i can and then remember get- everything so because he, he was he like texted me after lowe's episode when we started to talk about 
something and he was like no it's about the eighth grade um is about the eighth grade uh, uh talent show that's been a topic on this show for for a couple episodes come back because it's absolutely I don't remember hilarious. that what was that about it's, it's hilarious and our our listeners our 10 listeners out there don't want to hear it again but uh <laughs> but uh bt texted me like right after hearing that he's like yeah dude uh robino won that robino won um the talent show and I was like, oh, he's like, yeah, he did like uh, changes by Tupac or something. And like, and he, um, he yeah, Ro- I remember Robino performing. Yeah. I don't re- even remember him performing, but BT knew the winner. He knew, like, I don't know. He Robino. Just What's Robino up to? Alive, I hope. Oh, I, don't I don't know. know. I, I follow him on Instagram and he's just All right. Not so very he's active. alive. He's not, not be, as active as he'd like him to be. Yeah, I about two years ago or something like that. I remember him releasing like a song that he recorded, but perfect. I wish he was putting out more more content for sure. <laughs> he needs a content manager. He needs somebody to. Don't we uh, all? We all need a content manager. <laughs> the way the world's turning, man. <laughs> you guys will have one soon enough. But yeah, you need Terrell, and then he could bring up pictures of like anybody you're referencing at the time. He could yeah. just have their picture up on the screen and be like, "Oh yeah, I remember." Mm-hmm. Yeah, I forget who the girl was that beat me out, but yeah, she smoked me. But she you know, smoked me um, in the presidential. Kate Berry too is another person like that who remembers a bunch of shit. I guess gotta have Kate Berry on. According He's to Kate old. Berry, I went to sophomore semi with Kate Berry, and I remember uh, me and Reeb were both wanted to ask her and we both like decided it at lunch together or something i was like yeah i'm gonna ask Kate." he's like no i'm gonna ask Kate." so we both booked it to her right where we knew where her class was we both booked it to there and like i beat him by like a hair i was like go go to the (laughs) dance with me she's like all right cool (laughs) i was like that's great (laughs) that's great reed would be another good guest he could tell us some stories Oh, I, I can if he spin, could spin a yarn, Stephen Reeb. Yeah, he's always up to something uh, secretive or some uh, yeah. top secret bullshit. Does he work for the government? Does he still work for the government? I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know what he does. Yeah. I, I saw him once when I was in uh, New York. It's not yes. just, we ran into each other once. He came to a show one time, and uh, but yeah, we just never uh, never ran into each other much. I see Francisco out here. I saw him nice. out here the other awesome, day. Yeah, dude. Yeah. So you're not Another far legend. from him. Are you in Miami or where are you at? I'm in. I'm in Miami, dude. You want to see my fucking view? I don't know if you could see it Welcome out there, but that's to the me, that, Miami. It, that's it's, the it, ocean, everyone dude. raves about Miami. Miami and Nashville are the like fastest growing. Amazing cities, both of them. Yeah, but but so so I didn't know that Francisco was in Miami. Was he just there visiting? Because I don't think he lives there. Does he? He's in Fort Lauderdale, so that's like oh, forty five right. minutes forty five minutes yeah. away. Do you guys play some football? No, I want to though. But he's uh, yeah, he's in a league. So I told him I want to get get down. But I imagine it's pr- it's fairly competitive, and I haven't played in a, in a minute. But I got to get back into you it. Can handle it. You always stay in shape. Yeah. I don't know how yeah, you but do. soccer soccer touch is a, is a uh, a whole different ball game. It's like riding a bike. You got it. Yeah, that's true. Nice. Are those Cubanos? How uh, off brand of me to have a uh, backwards when it's a uh, Dutch Masters podcast? Huh? Yeah. Well, I mean, it, anything goes on this here thing here. <laughs> what a slap in I the can... face to the sponsors. Bonner said he bought a case of or a, a box of them during COVID. Yeah, I have Smoked them right water. here. Dutch Masters. Yeah. 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 Yeah, right yeah, this is really trashy. This almost doesn't even count as a cigar, but I was doing uh, cigars on this deck, and I was like, oh, I got to have these as like a backup if I don't have any. So this is kind of embarrassing to have this right now. but <laughs> With a nice little. That's pretty sweet. And, oh, yeah, those look nice. How much is a box? <laughs> 60 bucks man that's crazy mm-hmm. 60 bucks how are they as a cigar terrible. uh they're terrible <laughs> <laughs> the worst huh? the worst yeah have you ever smoked a green leaf i don't know like with Maybe weed I, or without weed well, of course with weed we have with weed oh uh, yeah but um no just as they are garcia vega is that right yeah i want to say yeah garcia vega yeah all those I only remember as like weed things. I don't remember them as like 
but then I was like, oh yeah, they, they sell them as just a cigar. Like there's people out there that just buy those as a as a cigar. And I smoke don't them. know. I don't know <laughs> if they do. Or it's a cover. It's almost like a yeah. shell a shell corporation for weed. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Well, you know, if you're a cigar smoker and you like smoking good cigars, it can become a costly habit. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're, that, if you're shelling out fifteen, twenty dollars for cigars, dude, like, yeah, that's true. That's a true. really good cigar habit. That's a wealthy man's habit. You know, you don't see any like homeless people ripping stogie. Like, you also have to be celebrating something. It seems like it's like if life's not going well, you're not smoking a cigar, <laughs> yeah. or at least you shouldn't be. <laughs> You know, or you like, are for, or, or you like work for the state, and you 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 got your budget, and you got your yeah. cigars built in, and you got your pull out you know chair for the porch, and that's that's who you are. Yeah, you know how to live a, you know how to enjoy life. Yes. if you're having a cigar. Yes, you have your drink. You might have a drinking problem, but you got it kind of under control. You're a functioning alcoholic. Yes. And you yes. smoke cigars. Every cigar, every like consistent cigar smoker I know. I remember growing up, my neighbor used to smoke cigars. Mr. Tony Wood was in my neighborhood. used to smoke a pipe. That was insane. I smoked a pipe for a minute, man. Tobacco? Yep. It was crazy, dude. He would just walk around the neighborhood smoking a pipe. It was the best smell ever. Like oh, the yeah. secondhand smell of a pipe is insane Mm -hmm. and i just remember i mean he would just walk around smoking a a pipe like he was in a uh sherlock holmes movie or something a good uh cigar can be really nice too aromatically can you hear me guys oh yeah we turned your mic we turned your mic off okay no but if i tap this thing it does turn (laughs) off so i don't know um you could probably turn that off somehow pete that function Whatever. That was the house where you lived over by Frank Saba and Yeah. yeah. Legendary neighborhood. Yeah. Pete Isaac, Ryan Holly. Yeah. The Casey's. Liz Casey. Remember Liz oh, Casey? Liz. Uh oh yeah. Beth Schwartz. Legend. Oh yeah. Beth Schwartz. Andrew wow. Andrew Arena. Legend. Schwartz is Arena. with you. Wow. All wow. in one there. Na- Andrew Andrew Massid. Rufus, oh. Rufus, Macaros. If oh, you curl back Rufus. up, Macaros. Yeah. If you go up up that neighborhood, yeah. Macaros yeah. were on my bus. Yeah, yeah, that well, was a good every, neighborhood. Every neighborhood was kind of legendary, though. Like your neighborhood had some, had legends too, and both Which you guys' one? neighborhoods. The the lamplighter. I the first. Were, weren't you lamplighter? No, you were Irita. No. I mean, Irita. 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 We had Stax. like Demas. Stax. Yeah. Leo's. <laughs> Mindu. Mindu. Uh, and then you just Harrington, had so- soccer Chrissy, practice behind your house. Chrissy Tonelli. Um, uh, John Tonelli. Omaya. <laughs> Omaya was there for a minute. Yeah. Yep. Fontecchio. Do you remember the Fontecchios? Yeah. They were Pustis cousins. They were part of Sunset yeah. Beach. Yeah. Sunset dude, Beach were, squad. They were built of iron, those guys. I mean, remember Tommy Fontecchio? little kid it was just like jacked they could do like you know triple backflips off of the high you know jump at <laughs> yeah sunset. some people they were, were so fearless advanced fearless that, too. Huh? That, yeah they were advanced and fearless and they were just like men above among boys when they were like but yeah that was and then my my but i thought you were referring to the neighborhood before that which consisted of me cullen burke uh kyle howe dan moyna the Jimmy Gleason Golden, crew. The, the Gleason, Gleason Road. Crew. Yeah. I don't know that crew. I don't know that. We met the We Met. We're in the We Met's run uh, uh Irita. Yeah. Yeah. And then we and then I moved near the We Met's. And then they were my neighbors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess it's kinda of, it's a relatively small town, so every like every neighborhood is gonna be kind of stacked. So like if you had so, to pick like an all star squad from people's neighborhoods, who you can get uh, yeah. you get pretty stacked in every every area. And then if you go up like different street, like I had the, I had Pete Wood on, on one street. And then I had like Mike Mahoney mm-hmm. behind my house and shit. So it was like, yeah, you could, uh, so where, who, who do you think had the best pool growing up? A great question. Maybe the Pollocks. Oh, really? Like they Never had a pretty sweet one. There. I was going to um, say Shannon Slaughter, number one. 
Oh, just like the best memories, probably. Yeah, yeah Slaughter's was up Magnus? there. Diana Magnus. Diana Magnus was good too. Yeah, dude, and it was walkable from uh, from school. I remember like the half days. Mm-hmm. The places that were walkable were the best. Like yeah, from we used the to rip it up at Diana Magnus. <laughs> oh, Irish, oh man, was Irish there... family, dude. <laughs> yeah, was there a better say, time I, I... than that? Yeah. And then Lowe brought up Jeanette Samiski's. I think I've been there once. She had an above ground way back. Above grounds were pretty awesome. You know, they were definitely uh, trashy, but they were amazing. The whirlpools and those things? Yeah, yeah, whirlpools were so fun. Decks built up to the edge of them so you could get a nice running start to jump in. Yeah, just designed for people to break their necks in. Mm -hmm, you know, Yeah. Perfectly designed for that. But yeah, I don't think there was a better time than maybe like eighth grade, like pool, like going to someone's pool after, on like a half day. And it was like it I was it, it was playful. I don't think we were boozing or anything. No, we were like all hopped up on Mountain Dew. Maybe a little weed and, and being introduced slowly but surely. Weed started and just being in. like scared of <laughs> like being less scared of girls, but still like sca- like girls were still crazy. It was yeah. still like an insane thing. Mm-hmm. Like when you heard about like people like making out and stuff, like that was a huge thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the that's the best, dude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that was. It best. doesn't it yeah, doesn't get much better than yeah, that. Yeah, that's that roller kingdom laser tag shit, dude. That I mean, it was the like simple I, stuff. It was like the little like you know he you know held my hand or like no one knows this, but like we we hugged and stuff after and like. It was, it was, it was very good. It was good times. Was like, yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. I, yeah. I'm trying to think of like the wildest time, but yeah, so many good memories that come back with, uh, but those, when I think of that. pool, when I think of pools, best pools, I think of Shan Slaughter, Di Magna, you're right. One and two. I didn't, I didn't have a, much of a time at the Pollux and then like, I don't know. You can throw yeah, in just, like, oh, well, Lake Street. What the fuck am I saying? JB's house. Yeah, that was a good spot. Yeah. You have above ground or below? or In ground. In ground, but um, I was just like, sur- like my neighbors were right up against me, dude. Yeah. Not that that mattered. I mean, we definitely raged there and didn't give a fuck. And thankfully, jumped no off one the gave roof. a shit. <laughs> <laughs> no one yeah we were jumping off the roof into my pool uh chris i had like a split level home and i remember your house i forget your pool though yeah a back deck on the back there. so we could just like boost each other up onto the roof and then get a nice run off into the pool like a big long jump dude yeah and then you, uh, the old, do the old neighbor it? next door dude pat caught yeah. us out there one time there was like 15 of us out there just hanging out fucking each going off the roof one by one and finally like after six people jumping off my roof this old guy man bless his heart comes over and is just like do you realize what your parents would think about this what you're doing <laughs> like <laughs> called us right out and we immediately you're stopped like, and like you're like fuck you old man no we weren't what man. do we you were know like, yes sir because we wanted to continue partying there for the next eight hours man <laughs> yeah <laughs> she's like you're right we will behave did you guys get in trouble were you guys in the uh pool the pool heist in uh yep. eighth grade yep. when we, we were the we first ones stay. in i think me yep. and you Dude, Chris. I, We've I talked was, about uh, this on the on the cast. It it was who else was in it? It was started by me and Steve. Me and Steve started the whole thing. I don't know. I think <laughs> Chris and I, I. I think Chris and I were the first ones in. I think you and Steve were the first to instigate it. That's I remember you jumping guys were in. The first think... ones in. Yes, but that's yeah. only because we told you we had already gone in and we had. Yes, that's what I remember exactly. doing. Which I remember being like, in. "Oh, a lot of people have been in. Yeah, of course we can go in." Yeah. <laughs> Me and, Steven, oh, that's amazing. me and Steven think... ran through a couple sprinklers, dude. Me and Steve ran through some sprinklers oh, yeah, and we're like, let's wet. go tell them we jumped in the pool. Dude, we were unintentional <laughs> heroes. We thought we were followers, but we were actually fucking leaders. We were <laughs> leaders disguised as followers. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We were uh dude, and then I dated the girl whose pool we went. I went to prom with the girl whose pool we jumped we 
were in and she uh she had the letter that we had she had my apology letter that i sent <laughs> to her parents oh my god and it was oh, this man. it was the weakest apology ever like i'm so <laughs> like i was like trying to be sincere and i was like i don't care yeah 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 Yeah, my apology was like really weak really a mask y'all have to write one to, to, i don't know maybe easily, i just did easily had to all write one yeah i mean i know we got suspended or something like imagine receiving that us. letter you'd be like what the hell is this oh these Assholes jumped in my pool. Now they're writing me an apology letter. Yeah, it's not that big a deal. Yeah, we didn't do anything bad. But yeah, it's kind of, in hindsight, it's kind of like, why did you like well, if they the, just swept it under the rug? The school could have doesn't been know what to do, man. They have to put some forth some kind of disciplinary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. put some rails yeah. around it. I guess. It was just the, it was just the fact that everybody like tons of people started doing it. I think after if like a couple people yeah. did it, you'd probably get away with it. Yeah. And I think it was a hot day. I think we were out there like, like, yeah, and it was boring. I think there was like nothing else mm -hmm, going on. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a very good field. Yeah, we weren't occupied. We weren't occupied. I remember. Mm -hmm. Everybody was just sitting around slap dicking all day. So, yeah, so who, you're going to do, do something. The, do They're lucky we didn't girl? break into the house. Who's the girl? Yeah, Nikki uh, Morrow, SJ Turnblum's uh, wife. She lived there? Yeah. Oh no shit. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that. yeah. Yeah. Is that house still there or like it's SAC Park is expanded and shit? <laughs> yeah, maybe they took it down. No, they I should think the house is still there. there. I think the house is still there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They should they should give us a piece of that pool like it's uh part of the TD garden like when they take down the TD garden. <laughs> <laughs> piece of the floor. <laughs> uh that was legendary. It, they were selling pieces of the Nashville airport's carpet uh, when they redid the natural airport, which they just did, and it looks really nice. But they were, like, selling the carpet as if it were something like the TD Bank North freaking... So lame. Or I was like, like so right lame. an auditorium, like wood. Yeah, and it's happened. not even. Yeah, and we're talking like a shitty airport rug. I was like, this is stupid. Like, think of all the legends that have walked on this rug before. Yeah, they sold it that way. I'm sure. <laughs> all the musicians that have come through. It's like it's an airport. There, chill yeah, it's out. an airport. Yeah, exactly. you're not like cool. Exactly. You're not a hip airport. Well, right, right uh, after I moved there, Drew told me about the the flood that happened in like what was it, 2010 or something? A really bad flood in Nashville, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the whole old Ryman Auditorium or um, got flooded, you mm -hmm. know, and a lot of it was water damaged. And um, then when they built the new Grand Ole Opry, they had like slabs of wood from the stage oh, installed really? into the new Grand Ole Opry stage pretty cool so maybe they got it from that like oh maybe we can just you know do what they did with the rhyming you know cut some carpet up yeah and i know try but the airport is it. shot but yeah that <laughs> that flood my wife was here during that flight because she was at vandy and she said they, they like took canoes to the bar it was no it was, way yeah it was deep wow, i never heard funny. about that when was that 2010 yeah 2010 yeah so we yeah so she was still in school and she would yeah, so she's a, was would have been a senior. Or something. It's crazy how like uninterested you are in like parts of the world that you're not in or like don't care about. Like in 2010, I didn't like I didn't know what Nashville even was probably, so I just didn't give a <laughs> shit about it. Dude, my girlfriend was telling me she's from Colombia, and in like the 80s, they had a volcano erupt and wiped out like an entire town, like killed like no way. I want to say like tens of maybe not tens of thousands, maybe like a thousand. Yes, yep. people. Yeah, in a volcano like it was Pompeii in like wow. our lifetime, and I never heard of Whoa. it. No, crazy. And I I don't remember that, so it's not just you. I mean, right? And she was um, telling me like it devastated the whole. Like it was a town near hers, and uh, yeah, they just like couldn't get out or something. What did, they didn't you, know what did she say rocks. about it? She was like, "How do you not know about this?" Was she like, "Yeah, kind of," just like, like think that you're the center of the universe, kind of thing. Pretty much, <laughs> she knows that. Yeah, she knows that. She knows yeah. that. But that's the thing. Everybody from every country is like, yeah. It's like she talks shit and stuff, but then it's like she would never go back to mm -hmm. her country. Mm -hmm. So it's like mm -hmm. America's easy to, to shit on, but it's like people would not go back to. Yeah. I agree. It's still, it's still pretty good considering. When you think about the people, you know, in the public life that do shit on it a little bit, comedians, actors, whoever, 
they still like live here you're right yeah like, well yeah i wouldn't move from la it's like well then what yeah you know not a million years yeah. would they go to somewhere else you can't yeah. you know no, you even can't, canada you can't even this, canada sucks the small business the immigrant small business thing is just an it's a religion you know yeah you can't do that in any other country in the world yeah you know. yeah yeah they're yeah, she was telling me how, like, Venezuela is, like, in really bad shape. Mm-hmm. I never really know what's going on in any of those countries. But Venezuela, people are, like, dying just to get into Colombia. She's like, Colombia is in rough shape, and people from Venezuela would, like, kill just to be in Colombia. And then from Colombia, you try to get to, like, Mexico. And then mm-hmm. best-case scenario, you end up here. So mm-hmm. it's like... Yeah, everybody trying. Everybody's like trying to get to a different spot. And then they that's try to better. get to Canada, and eventually, yeah, and then Canada's the final, <laughs> yeah. final place. <laughs> Canada's the pinnacle, about, or like Alaska what about free or something. Healthcare in Colombia does. Do, do, do you know if uh, Colombia has free healthcare? Yeah, as you're saying like that, so that politicians are so corrupt. I mean, politicians everywhere, but there they just like don't even hide it. Like they're just yeah. so. Yeah so corrupt and yeah the guy the guy who's president now or whatever is like yeah we want to model ourselves after cuba and cuba's like a communist communist yeah. country he's like but yeah but they got great health care and people okay. are just like yeah dude but they're a communist country uh, yeah, but he's just like, still go he's still like <laughs> <laughs> you can't think of anything better but yeah, yeah it's just insane over there and so they don't even hide, like they don't even hide it does she still have family there? She have family here. Does she come here alone, or she have family here too? She came here on her own as a uh, as an au pair. And mm-hmm. when you come as an au pair, you have like a visa or whatever, as long as you stay an au pair. But once mm-hmm. you leave that program, you're you're on your own. So mm-hmm. that's how a lot of people come over. They come over as an au pair, but then they just leave. They just leave from that program. But once they do that, they don't have like visas. They have to do the all the papers. Yeah, no, no papers. You just living, living like a fucking uh, refugee. Mm. <laughs> well, Venezuela is all messed up from inflation that's through the roof to a uh, terrible government, but it sits on like some of the largest crude oil and natural minerals. I guess like the value of this the country of Venezuela is like really, really high when it comes to those materials. I guess so. That's clearly you know affecting politicians or at least putting money in their pockets and then they don't give a shit i guess about the people so yeah that is crazy that once people get power they're just like yeah Mm -hmm. fuck it all like even even now when everybody Mm -hmm. knows it's happening like back in the day you kind of understand it because it's like maybe the Mm -hmm. rest of the world won't hear about it but it's like now everybody's gonna hear about it and still doesn't matter yeah the the social network man changed everything as far as news and being becoming aware of things internationally like it's wild mm-hmm. it is but it's like still nothing really nothing's gonna change you know corrupt politicians are still gonna just do do their own thing oh it's gonna get and nobody's worse, gonna give man. a shit <laughs> it's fun times so it's fun times but what yeah anyways do? what do you do what do you do chris you choose to ignore it or do you have to follow it with some of your material no, you, I kind of, uh, I mean, you get it. You don't want to be totally ignorant, but at the same time, it's like, you can't worry. I can't, you can't worry about that. It's right. Too like, much. don't start your day looking at the news. I get that. If you yeah. want to not be yeah, depressed, I get that. Right. But, but, but what about yeah, like aware our comedian, aren't comedians shifting towards like pushing back on the wokeism and shit like that? Yeah. You hear about that a lot. I don't know. It hasn't really affected me probably because nobody knows who I am, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and you, and you've been saying it all along. I mean, you're, you're, yeah. So I could just, fly, you can fly under the radar about it. Somebody's got a funny bit where they're like, yeah, this comedian the other day was talking about getting canceled. It's like, dude, nobody knows who you are. You can't get canceled when nobody knows <laughs> you. like canceled from what being a fucking Grubhub delivery right, guy, right. like take right, it easy. Right. 
So well, we, still, yeah. we I mean, I'm not, we get people that have listened to our show right here. And first of all, we don't advertise or do anything. And like, no one can even search. It's this. a su- it's a secret podcast. It's like a secret podcast. But like, there's people that are like, they don't want you know, you got to be careful about this. And I'm like, who the fuck are you talking about? No, yeah, like there's a total of twelve about? people that listen to this. <laughs> you know, and not to mention, like again, if you did get canceled, like what it, who, what are they canceling? Like, yeah. I, I don't know. Like, people worry about stuff, I think, a little too much. And I think that the pendulum is, should swing back because people need to cool out a little Agreed, bit. brother. Agreed. Agreed. And there's only so many things you can, like, complain about to the point where it's like, yeah, who who cares? And everybody's going to say something dumb at some point. So it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, it's basically just people that aren't happy with where let the, me ask the, you with this. themselves. Have you, have you like, ever complained about anything? Like, really? I can't imagine what it would I don't, take for I, me, I don't, I don't for me to these... write a complaint on like a YouTube video. Like, hey, this YouTube I, I... video sucks. It's like, then don't Dude, watch it. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It's so <laughs> petty and bullshit. <laughs> the fact you're, that you're, you're, you're taking time like, to do it. more like observational, it seems like, Chris. Like, sh- yeah, it should be the rule. Like, like if then don't fucking watch it. Then change the channel. Mm-hmm. If you if you are taking the time to write this shit on here, then you're then this is something else, man. This is yeah. something wrong with you. This is some grab for attention that is has nothing to do with the video clip of Kim Beck stand up on a Thursday night in East Bump Fuck, Florida. No, yeah, right. Like, like, don't watch it. I'm not. You wasn't asking you to. So you know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. The and, higher uh, ups I get, I get the people that have actual influence over over stuff. But then they get to so higher up here. So here's the paradox with it. Then they get so higher up that they that they can't get canceled. Like Trump saying, I could shoot someone in the middle of Times Square and still be president. Like, <laughs> like honestly, like that was a perfect depiction of that stuff. Like once you get even so big where your your microphone is so big that you, you know, you could affect people's lives. No one touches you, which is messed up. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it's I mean, like every comic usually, like Chris Rock just had his special and he talked about it in like the beginning of his. It's like, uh, hopefully I don't offend anybody. But I think it's kind of like, as I, I don't know that many people are, are complaining. I think people are aware now that like, oh, if I'm the person complaining, I'm kind of a huge loser. Yeah. You know, so I think less people are doing it, but I don't know. It's That's still a good point. Yeah. You know, it's like if you're still caring about it and also the people that care about can it's like, it's not going to. I mean, I guess if it affects if it affects your career, I would care about it, but it doesn't seem like it's it does. If people are talking shit about you, then yeah, it, it probably doesn't feel great. But mm-hmm. at the same time, yeah, bad press is still press, you know. Yeah, it's still exactly. Um, I have a comedy question. I, I'd like to hear a good Shoot, heckler baby. story if you have one, Chris. Um, because oh. you know a lot of these. Uh, comedians are doing reels about their heckling so many, fucking so many of them do you do you got are one there a lot? i'm trying to think no i don't have but i see so many of them all the time people like drunk women and shit no i don't usually invite it in i feel like you have to like invite it in but no i don't so know you that feel i have like a lot like of these people one. make it part of their act kind of thing kind of they know it's yeah. gonna they know what's it's, happening you know yeah. they're just like it's really easy to like for them, especially to just eviscerate some like drunk old lady. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, yeah, yeah, all stupid. So, yeah, I know. I wish I had some. I need to just go out and get some fucking shitty hecklers. But I'm trying to think. I mean, one time I did a competition and got like don- it was a dong show competition. It was like a gong show. It's a dong show. Like it's a <laughs> show your dick cock show um <laughs> but yeah they got they gong you off and within like 30 seconds they got you're supposed to go five minutes within like 30 seconds they're oh, just okay. like fuck fuck this guy oh, you're off man. and that was pretty that was tough because i had like cousins there i think my sisters my sisters were there i was like oh i'm gonna kill this competition yeah. and they were just yeah. like wow they're just like oh yeah that no. short form comedy thing is really really intense man have you seen the kill tony shit Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really that's, cool. That that's really, really cool. cool. But yeah. But yeah, they just roast 
it's like you got to you got to be prepared to get roasted pretty hard. Yeah, it's hum- it's humbling. <laughs> They're going to rip apart like every every insecurity you have. Do you know about like, Kill Tony Pete? No. Uh this comedian Tony Hinchcliffe, he, he has a show where he gets amateur comedians up on stage to do what is it one minute chris yeah one minute of comedy one minute of comedy and he has like you know celebrity legendary like comedians on the panel with him sure and after the minute's done they kind of like roast the guy and like try to get more material out of him you know Okay. And uh, what are they like? Score? Is there any like score or anything like, like that? Or yeah, like, like, no, oh. they just tell them if it's good or not. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you get to be, you get to like come back if it's good. If you do really good, he's made some people's careers. Like there's the guys that have done well and now he'll like bring them on tour yeah. and stuff like that. So it's like, yeah. And you get to be on, it's like a huge podcast. So it's like mm-hmm. you get, you got to get picked out of a bucket. I went one time and you, there's like a hundred, hundred people there everybody's in the bucket like trying to get up oh wow so there's like a hundred people in the bucket and they just pick you out of the crowd they just say whoever's next and you go you got to be ready to go wow that's cool at any time so it's really crazy some people it's their first time ever doing comedy and they'll do it in front of like a hundred people wow and i'm like yeah that would be terrifying but it's tough because you got to like prepare jokes for it so it's like Mm -hmm. usually you'll get it like a week ahead maybe a couple weeks ahead like who you're roasting and then you'll exchange information about each other. Okay. Like the person will tell you like, Oh, my, my dad died or something like give you some, like their darkest, deepest, like insecurities. And then you just have to <laughs> rip them apart. Just play off that. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's but yeah, you have to be mean. Like the meaner you are, the better. <laughs> like I've done it with girls. I've done it with girls who are really cool and, and funny and stuff. But like, I feel bad after I gotta be like, yo, I didn't, I, I hope you don't really, like <laughs> really think you're like ugly and fat and shit. Yeah, like, I think you're, I think you're beautiful, but <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's great. Oh. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, there's a billion different types of comedy. It's gotten so big. Like every city I've done it in, it's all it's always different. Miami doesn't have a, a huge comedy scene, but there's still like shows every night. There's still stuff going on, but it's fucking rough, dude. It, there's a lot of shows I've done out here that are just like maybe like five people in the crowd in like a yeah. huge bar. Yeah. Five people. So it brings you back to like your, your early days, mm-hmm. but got to do it. Well, what about, uh, you know, what about nerves? Said. Do you ever get nervous before you get up there? Uh, yeah, I do. But now I know it's going to be, I know it can only go so bad. Like, I've had, I think some of my worst sets are behind me. Hopefully I'm sure I'll have more, but yeah, when I had, if I've had to do, if I have to do like a long set, I'll probably be fucked. But if I'm only doing like 10 to 20 minutes, it's like, I know relatively it's going to be, it's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be horrible. The other night I I did a show in Naples where I was probably where I was coming from when I was talking to you guys and uh, I was supposed to do 15 minutes and the headliner was late. So I'm on stage and one of the staff members brings a piece of paper to me while I'm on stage and is like, Hey, keep going. And I was like, Oh fuck. Okay. And the crowd saw it happen. The crowd, I was like, Oh, I guess I got to keep going. And I was like pretty much out of jokes. And I was Uh just like, trying to stretch. And finally he was there. He came maybe like 12 minutes later. Mm -hmm. So I had to do it. So I was fucking dying. I was dying. I mean, I was, I did all right. I survived, but I was like, yeah, that's a, uh, that's a tough one. It's a, it was a moment that, you weren't prepared for. Not prepared, dude. And I do not like to be prepared when I'm not up there. Oh. Like I have like exactly what, what the set is and everything. And then I was like, oh fuck. Then you have to make it look like natural. Like, okay, mm-hmm. this is perfectly normal. Everything's under control. And it was not, it was definitely not. So you've been doing it for six years now. All over the place, Six years traveling, touring the, tour the world, maybe. Have you been? What, what What's the most like obscure place you've been to? I uh, you went some to like pla- somewhere in Maine or something. Yeah, like some that. weird place in Maine, Pennsylvania. But those crowds are usually great because they don't yeah. get entertain. They don't get entertainment sure. that often, so they mm-hmm. think you're like 
they don't know the Celebrity. difference between you and like Chris Rock. If you say like, oh, this guy's from Boston, they're like, oh my God, it's fucking Joe Rogan. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't really know the difference. So yeah, I guess they're just stupid, you know? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, no I, like, the, I like those they, places. They just, they just appreciate it. They just not, you know, they don't. I don't know. They don't yeah, that's mean. I find that. anybody that like enjoys it too much. I'm like, oh, these fucking dumbasses. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't even a joke. I didn't even get to the punchline. They do exist. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like these idiots. But yeah, I should appreciate them more. But yeah, dude, I just still can't believe that Lynn didn't think we dated. That's really the fucking. <laughs> that's the most humbling thing that's happened to me. Uh, I've had some really bad bombs, but that's probably my biggest, that's probably my biggest bomb. That's funny. She's got, we got to get her on, man. We got to get her side of it. We need to fa- she needs to face the music, dude. Yeah. She needs to fucking yeah. pay the piper. Yeah, she does. She does. I wonder what else she's denying. She's probably fucking, she probably doesn't think 9-11, she thinks 9-11 was an inside she's, job. She's an anti-vaxxer, I think. She's no, a I'm big time denier. She's a I'm denier of everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> big time denier oh but yeah dude that was uh that's a that's a real buzz kill but in miami's miami like miami's a good spot though you've been there for a while it's beautiful man i've been here for three or four months and uh i think it's been like 80 and sunny every day sweet it's crazy think about staying uh, for now, at least for sure. <laughs> yeah. I don't really have a, uh, five year plan really, you know? Yeah. No, kind of no. just play it by ear. It's the best True. way to be right there. Mm-hmm. You know, eventually someday I'll have to figure it out. Comedy kind of gives you an excuse. Cause it's like, ah, oh, no, I'm doing this, uh, comedy oh, I'm thing. On the road. Can't, yeah, I'm on the road. Yeah. Can't possibly, uh, settle down. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you definitely could. <laughs> you know, all good things but, yeah. and all good time, man. Yeah, we got time, right? We're still young. We're still kids. Still feel like it, that's for sure. Well, mentally, not physically. But yeah. (laughs) Yeah. We're still uh we're still I don't know when I don't know when you grow up. And if you do grow up, then like fuck you. (laughs) Yeah, what a nerd, right? (laughs) You know, The people that really got it all and all, you know, tight and all figured out and just like there's that, that those are the ones that really scare me. Dude, there's a there's a meme that keeps coming up from my musician friends and it's um a little kid and his father and it says, "Daddy, when I grow up, I want to be a musician." And the dad says, "You can't do both, son." <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> Yeah. I have been asking folks it, it, if you've been arrested. Were you arrested in Shrewsbury? Oh, and yeah. Was it, yeah. Was it by? I, um, I got arrested one time with Anthony Arminio. We didn't get arrested, but we got brought. I got brought <laughs> home to my parents. Um, because, you know. Which is even worse, dude, because they yeah. brought me home in a cop car. And I remember I was with Anthony Arminio, and I first they dropped. This. First, they dropped him off. We were just walking on the side of the street, and he had like a bottle of booze and a joint or something. Mm -hmm. Something just so reckless that was just Mm -hmm. like walking on Main Street, too, in Shrewsbury. And uh, yeah, the cops brought him home first. And I was like, yeah, I think I'm just going to like crash here tonight. You guys can drop me off here. And they're like, no, where is home? And I'm like, fuck. I could have easily just been like, yeah, no, I don't have a home. Like, this is it. Yeah. But I I was so afraid. My house or something. Yeah. But yeah, that was a tough mm-hmm. one. And then um, the one where everybody got arrested, C Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. that's not really an arrest. Arrested? No, not an arrest, but whatever. Detain, like detained. Yeah. Paddy wagon. PC'd. Yeah, PC'd. <laughs> and then Do you remember uh, who jumped out the window there that like broke their leg? Rudy. Was it Rudy? Oh, Rudy made a run for it, and he he was all scraped up and stuff. I remember he had some more war wounds i don't know who else but you're right somebody might have broken a bone someone jumped out the second story window and they broke a bone and we're trying to figure I mean, out who that was and the and at the in the long run i should have like should have done that. in hindsight it's like that was so easy like we all knew the cops were there we the knew we party was on for 10 minutes 
And they asked us to line up with who's been drinking and who hasn't been. And they let the people who lined up and who hasn't been, they let them go. I was like, why didn't I at least try that? Because you're a good boy. (laughs) No, that was so dumb. And the people were hiding. Remember people were hiding in the house and stuff? Yeah, dude. The best is Parmenter pretending he's asleep. (laughs) Did he get away with it? Well, Lo was on the cast a couple of days ago and she said that they, yeah, her and M. LeBlanc and Kyle, I think, got away. Did she say that? But the I'm fact, so no, I don't know that. if he got away, but I think he talked to the cops and he was like, I don't, I didn't even know there was a party. I just think that is a riot. Like, dude, he's great. God. He's one of the best at like finagling I, his way out of shit. Oh my God. He's got such an innocent face and like he gets like, a, and, like confused and like, yeah, I don't, yeah. and like can genuinely like really pull that off. It's believable. We're peacing out. All right, dudes. This has been a lot of fun. Thanks a lot, Chris. Let's do it again. We'll see you back. Hope to Good see you on the stage in person soon. <laughs>